Hello and welcome to the Access Baseball Podcast. I'm your host, Vinny Massana. This week, we're filming live once again from Showtime Athletics in Holbrook, New York, jo- joined by a very special guest, Mason Mailing. Mason's a senior at Longwood and just recently committed to Muhlenberg College. We got a lot of stuff to talk about, his college commitment, uh, the upcoming season for Longwood. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. No matter the level you play at, everyone wants to be at their best. Elite-level athletes have a team around them to help them excel in every facet of the game. If you've ever wondered how you can have the same level of attention that the world-class athletes do, but without breaking the bank, then the Vitality Center is your answer. Their team of specialists can get you back in the game quickly and safely and keep you at your best throughout the season. Their holistic one-stop shop approach can address the physical and mental parts of the game to help you gain the edge you need to compete with the best. Conveniently located in Comac, New York, right off of the LIE in the Northern State, the Vitality Center is ready for you. To learn learn more, go to vitalitycenterli.com or give them a call at 631-864-2784. All right, Mason, so let's talk about the most recent news. Just about last week, uh, you committed to Muhlenberg College in Pennsylvania. So can you tell our audience a little bit about that experience and why you chose that school? Yeah, so during COVID, everything recruiting-wise was shut down. You couldn't talk to certain schools. Everything was crazy. I'm sure every kid in the class of 2022, 2021, and even probably 23, it's all over the place. So for me personally, I knew I wanted to go to a high academic school. Baseball was secondary but still playing competitive baseball Mm -hmm. and this summer I did a showcase down in PA right after school ended and got in connection with Mullenberg communicated with them the whole summer took a visit mid-August and the rest is history yeah now I want to expand on something that you said you said baseball is secondary and I think that kind of gets lost nowadays everybody wants to prioritize the power five down south bigs all those buzzwords you know you always hear a kid wants to play down south and usually they're not talking about going you know, to an NAIA school or Division Three, they're talking about going to Duke or, you know, LSU or something like that. So mm-hmm. um, when was that shift in your head where you started to, you know, maybe come to terms with, I'm not going to, you know, be a Power Five player and I want to start focusing in on what it is I want to do after baseball? I think once you get to high school, you see where the talent is, to be honest, and you see where you – it's good to uh, – Put yourself against other guys. Yeah. So coming in as a freshman, I see Kyle Roush, I see Matt and Saizo, Jose. And I'm mm-hmm. like, these guys are going D2, and Kyle went D1. And I'm just like, where do I put myself? So mm-hmm. I was always a good student, and I knew that if I continued to be a, a good student, then I could take that a long way. Yeah, the rest will take care of itself. Awesome. So um, obviously you mentioned COVID, and that's something that people are still dealing with, the ramifications of that. But also, I'm glad you mentioned that it, the impact of it was more than just the 2021 class. Because I think at that time last year, everybody kind of thought it was, oh, well, I'm a junior or I'm a sophomore. It's not going to impact me. Was that kind of your thought process at first? Not at all. I was proactive from the start of hit. From every beginning, I was mm-hmm. on my recruiting profiles, reaching out to schools, every possible D1, D2, D3, and just putting myself out there. I mean, if you can be proactive, there's a school somewhere there for you. Mm-hmm. As far as the showcases go, were any of them, would you say, more effective than others, or did you? are you really glad that you went to the school itself to see them? Um, I think I went to an, the showcase where I met Mullenberg, I went to an elite academic showcase, mm. it's, that's what it's called, and uh, there I felt I got communication with two schools, and I think that really helped me. They did a showcase, we played a few games, and you get an evaluation, too, from the coach. Mm-hmm. So I was actually fortunate enough to get it from Mullenberg, and yeah, I think that showcase definitely helped me. It was an academic one, so you're surrounded with mm-hmm. people that have the same goal where baseball might not be prioritized. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, a lot of the higher academic showcases are definitely becoming more in vogue right now because you know you can kind of see where you stand up against not just guys on um, on the baseball field, but also you know your SAT, ACT scores as well. So um, also, I wanted to shift gears, talk a little bit about the school team. So Longwood. Very competitive program. You guys had another good year last year. Can you tell our audience a little bit about the um, the 2021 season that you guys just had? Yeah, so we played really well. Uh, I don't recall our record, but we had guys everywhere, juniors to seniors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you have an ace in Tommy Ventimiglia who yeah. got drafted. I mean, yeah, leaders like Joe and Madrigato, Joe McDonald, Madrigato, they all took over the juniors. There was a lot of us, and they took us under their wings, and mm-hmm. we just succeeded. Yeah, and it's so rare to have somebody like Tommy come up. He came up as a sophomore. He was 
immediately, you know, one of the best pitchers on Long Island that year went 5-0 and with a 0.28 ERA, a save, uh, won a, a clinching game in the semifinals, won a game in the playoffs that year. I mean, were you – what? From your standpoint, what was it like playing behind a kid of that of that caliber? Because not a lot of people can play with somebody that winds up getting drafted. Every team has an ace, but very few of them actually go on to the next level. It's probably an amazing experience, an amazing experience, and I'm just like, I don't know what to say because I did play with him, and yeah. uh, I don't think, like you said, many people have that opportunity to play with a guy like that. But he wasn't. He was. He was just like us at the end of the day, mm -hmm. and he he was very humble, and he made sure that. Everyone was together. He was the leader on that team. He yeah, really that, brought us together. That's important because not only do you want your ace to win games on the mound, but you have to, you know, you have to kind of set the set the tone. And it's almost like an extension of the coaching staff. Which, speaking of which, Coach McSherry, he's been at the helm now for about five or six years, and you know, really took the program into his own. So, what have your experiences been like with him? And you know, um, peel back the curtain a little bit for audience about what it's like, you know, playing for a coach like that. I think his mentality is small ball, and we always find a way to win games, whether it's early, late, and however it is, just keep scoring runs and mm -hmm. win games. And you know, from the from the from when I uh, entered high school in ninth grade till now, he's always set the expectations. He already sent out a group message to all mm -hmm. the players. We have our expectations for the season already. We're going to start working out soon, hopefully. Yeah. And we're we're ready to fight. Yeah, and conference one. You know, usually called League One last year, they went by Conference One. As good of a level of talent on Long Island as there is, maybe with the exception of uh, the Catholic League, um, who were some of the pitchers that impressed you that you went against last year? Um, I think Ward Melville had a guy or two. Noth is always legit yeah, from Pat Med. Pitcher, um, yeah. Who else? I think uh, Brentwood got their ace back. He went to St. John the Baptist, but now he's back. Randy, yeah, Rand, Randy, yep. So mm -hmm. we're probably gonna face him this year, and I'm excited. I mean, mm -hmm. like McSherry's mentality is small ball, so mm -hmm. we're ready to win games. However, if it's one zip or fourteen zip, yeah, you guys are a well well rounded team. And one player I wanted to single out last year, Joe McDonald, kind of fell under the radar, um, just because of you know on the team, you know, you have a pro pitcher on the team. Obviously, he's gonna get a lot of attention, but McDonald. From you know, if I remember correctly, hit close to 500 last year. Kind of a do-it-all player. I remember I went to a game he hit an inside the park home run in Yapank in that field, even though it's like a 400 foot <laughs> yeah, fence. Um, yeah, and he played first base. He was uh, you know stole bases. Kind of did everything. I mean, what was it like playing with him? I was actually fortunate enough to play with him on the strong as well, mm -hmm. and just to get to know him as a person. He's a great guy and. He's a better athlete. I mean, he teaches he teaches all of us his skills, whether it's running or flashing the glove at first, mm -hmm. and even his approach. As a leadoff guy, you want to like. I'm also I have a leadoff mentality, so I'm always picking at his brain, and he knows what to say. And he never said anything wrong to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And yes, he was definitely under the radar. The guy had he was very impactful. I don't know what we would have done without him last year. Yeah, and one more question before we uh, transition onto the strong. Um, can you tell our audience a little bit about the 2022 season? Are, are you guys? Do you have any under the radar players that you think could step up this year? I think we have a lot of guys. We have a lot of seniors. We all looked at the schedule already. We see we open up with Sachemis. So we close with Pat Med. Mm -hmm. So we're really excited for that. Yeah. Um, my Grass Gang member and Jake Hall is going to mm -hmm. be there, and we got Rocco Hall and Brendan Mayer behind the dish. Preston. Rocco was a catcher that had the triple play. The triple last play year, against right? Comac. Yep. That was insane. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan McCann is going to come in. Louis Dev. Devin Montalvo, Louis Caleb. I mean, all these guys are going to come in and perform, I think. And Caleb really impressed me last year. He kind of came out of nowhere. He definitely did, like. yeah. Second yeah. base, he locked it down there. And wherever you put him in the lineup, he always produced. Yeah, and, and he plays football as well, right? He does. He's kind He's of an all-around good athlete. Yep. So now let's talk about the strong. So you played with them. It's your second year with them. Can you tell our audience a little bit about your experience with, with them over the last couple of years? Yeah, so I love playing with Coach Lynch and Coach Jared. I met Lynch in junior high. He was actually like the junior high coach for Longwood. Mm -hmm. So we've always had a close connection. And then last summer, I didn't really have anywhere to go. So he took me in and he was like, hey, join our team. And I think <laughs> Hey, join our team. It wasn't really like that, but yeah, I tried out and everything. It. Yeah. yeah, and uh -huh. uh, I came in thinking I was going to be like a middle infielder utility guy. And then a few guys went down, Nick Perillo in the outfield. So it put me in center, and I just earned my spot there. I played center every game pretty much over the summer. And Nick Perillo from East Isop, uh, lefty pitcher. I think he's going to Cortland, right? He is, yeah. 
he seems like another under the radar kid on Long Island. That's somebody people should get familiar with. He definitely mm. is. I mean, hopefully the kid can stay healthy for this. I know he had a great spring at East Islip, and they won the yeah they won Long the Long Island, Island championship. Yeah. Incredible yeah. season. So, so, um, what's your what's your goals for the off season? My goal personally is to master the process, and what I mean by that is, uh, just get into a routine of getting up to the plate and mm -hmm. doing whatever it is, whether it's touch both sides of the plate. Mm -hmm. I think I have to trust my skills more. Last year I didn't have the best summer product uh, at the plate, mm -hmm. so I think just be like more I, consistent. Be more consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you wanted? Um, any any personal accomplishments for the season, or you just looking more on a macro level, just as far as like getting the job done? I think maybe being recognized as a leader. Mm -hmm. I feel like people need a uh, model to see and not a model to say. I kind of like stand by that. Yeah. So I don't need to see on my shirt to say I'm the captain. I just want the coaches and my teammates to know that I got their backs, they got mine, and if you give me the throne, I can hold it. Very well said. Did you play any other sports growing up? played hockey I did track as a freshman I like to be diverse in my sports yeah I think that's important that kind of gets lost nowadays there's not there's not a whole lot of uh, three sport athletes anymore um, who were some players in Major League Baseball that uh, you try to emulate Mike Trout now that I'm an outfielder but Jeter off the field was always oh yeah the model uh, of consistency he was the model of consistency mm -hmm. uh, Trout like I said and I think those are the main guys. I just mm -hmm. look at them and their posture and their body language, and it's it's never down. You see them hustle out plays on and off the field, and they're never getting into drama mm -hmm. off the field. Just the way they go about their business. Who are some people that have had a big impact on your career? My dad, for sure. My parents. My dad is coach, coaching me and teaching me life lessons inside and outside of baseball. I mean, I wouldn't be here without him. Mm -hmm. He definitely helped me with the recruiting, pro recruiting process, too. Uh, I played D1 at LAU, Brooklyn. So he knew a thing or two about baseball, and he knew mm -hmm. what I had to do recruiting-wise. So he kept me in shape. He kept me on top of my game for recruiting. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I wouldn't be out here without him or my mom. Awesome. What was the best experience that you've had on a baseball field so far in your career? Although we lost, I think it had to be against Comac this past. Those playoff games are intense, and mm -hmm. I love that energy. I love the vibe, and I was just – I think that, that was my place to be. I knew I, I should have been on that field, and – I knew I deserved to be there. Mm -hmm. Do you have any superstitions uh, on game day or at, or during a game? I try not to be superstitious. Huh. I know that that'll get in my head after I get a few hits. If mm -hmm. I have to go to McDonald's and get a <laughs> mocha frap or whatever yeah. it is, I try not to get that in my head. I like that. Uh, how about pregame hype music? Who's some of the artists that you like? Uh, pregame is Drake, but my walk-up music is House of Pain, Jump Around. Oh, so nice. Old school. <laughs> I'm a very old school guy. Before you even born. Um, how about favorite vacation that you've been on? Favorite vacation? Uh, it's got to be Puerto Rico. I okay. love Puerto Rico. That's a different one. I like it. Favorite Netflix show right now? Netflix. Hmm. I think The Last Dance. I love the sports. MJ. Me too. He's love it. Goat. MJ's my guy. The GOAT. <laughs> uh, let's see. Dream car. Dream car. Uh, I think a Beamer. BMW. I don't know what else. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> uh couple thoughts on Major League Baseball right now. Are you for or against a universal DH? Uh, I mean, I love seeing Bumgarner and Kershaw and all these guys hit, but... There's only a couple of them. I know, yeah. That's my problem. That Bumgarner is, a, is good, but for yeah. every one of him, there's 10 Bartolo Colons. There is, so <laughs> maybe a universal DH would be better. Yeah. The AL, always. How about the extra innings? Did you like having the runner on second base? I actually did, to be honest. I really? Mean, I know baseball is a boring game if you're watching it mm -hmm. after a while, but... I kind of liked it. It was it kept us watching, and it really shows what teams can play small ball and which ones can't. Have you had tournaments like that where it ended with, with run on second base? Good ways and bad ways where yeah. California rules, all these perfect game rules, you know. But what they could do, and I saw somebody put this on um, on Twitter the other day, why not start the 10th the inning with a runner off first if they don't score, then the next inning you get a runner off first and second if they don't score, then it's the bases loaded, so it gets progressively easier to score. It seems like... It seems quick to go one extra inning and you're automatically giving them a runner in scoring position. Or maybe put a, put one out instead of having no out. So just some food for thought if Rob Manfred's listening right now. That's my two cents. How about what's your favorite stadium in Major League Baseball you've been to? Stadium, uh, I think uh, that's a tough one. Wow. And I've been to a lot. I think Yankee really? Stadium. 
Yankees. You've been to a lot, and you're going to go to the I know, I know, Yankee one. Stadium. Oh, I'm a Yankee, Yankee fan. Yankee Stadium's a mausoleum. That is. Bad answer. We're going to end on that. Mason, thank you very much course, for your time. You. Uh, congratulations on the commitment. Best of luck this year. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Access Baseball Podcast. Thank you to our uh, host, uh, hosting venue, Showtime Athletics in Holbrook, New York. And thank you to the Vitality Center for sponsoring us. See you next week.